You have good timing. Find one of the mini open seats. <laughs> Welcome, darlings. I'm glad to have all of you. This is how to be a panelist. Let's go over some really, really brief introductions. My panel name is Aichi Yume because anime. Um, Amanda is my real human name. You can use either. I pretty much respond to any name that isn't derogatory or a slur. So just, hey, broad, not ideal. Probably get my attention, though. And I'm a cosplayer, panelist, social media manager, and just generalized fan person. Um, I say generalized fan person because I don't necessarily delineate between anime, comics, everything. I like all of it, and I have strong opinions about everything. So just generalized fan human being. I don't know. There are people with me. Um, because sometimes it's okay to handle other people. This is Carlos. He is my co-panelist, who is intentionally off-camera, which I love. He has been with me now for how many years? Five? This is Taylor, a very good friend of mine, also an aspiring panelist. This is Amber, who has helped me for a couple of panels. She was also the treasurer to the anime club I ran in college, so technically has been doing this for a little while. If by panelist you mean I have been screeching opinions at people, then she's technically been co-panelist for the longest time. <laughs> So, if that's your definition of panel, then I've been doing this for a real long time. Why are we having a conversation like this? So, this convention is great, and I love San Antonio, and I love these guys. Please come back next year. There's nothing negative to say about any of the people that I work with at this con, and so forth with all of San Antonio, and all of Texas, and all of the world. There is no wrong way to have a convention. We're having this conversation because apparently you guys have decided that you want to be as cool as you And this is a photo that was taken at Anime Fest? Yes, yes. Anime Fest. Um, I was given a dog in the middle of a beach, and I am made of dirt. Because don't just throw dogs at people. But the dog was me cute and completely outshone me the entire time. And I was fine with it. Am I wrong? That dog is infinitely more famous than me. Let's go over some vocabulary really, really quickly, just in case you're not used to your words. You should be. A panel is a presentation over by a person on a topic. Legal definition of a person. Legal definition of a topic. A panelist, the person or persons doing that panel. Panelist. Co-panelist. Additional co-panelists. Panel submission forms are the Hunger Games Goblet of Fire nonsense that you have to do to be a panelist. Um, those are as stringent as the con will allow. Some are, you look cute so you're in. Others are, unless you have 15 degrees and are related to me by blood, you will never step into this convention. A lot of those are dying out because obviously you can't succeed when you do that. But some panel submission forms are very strenuous. Others aren't. I'd be lying to you if I said they were all easy. Some of them are as simple as, you send an email, you get a winky face, you're good. Others are, I need 15 sources as to why you're doing this. Fair. Questions? Now we have the vocab done, we're going to get down to business. These lessons are broad outlines on how, on to how to be a better panelist, or how to step foot into being a panelist. Some of you might already be, which I'd be interested to know, you know, why. And what you do, and then the others are because you're curious to break into this world. I know when I was younger, the word panelist was very much a strong word. It was you were an expert, you were industry, you knew what you were doing, and I'll lovingly say that got a little bit muddled for a while. That it suddenly became a um, platform for just a lot of ranting, which, I mean, I do, full disclosure, but I at least give you sources for my ranting. There's at least usually a book that supported what I'm ranting about. So, I love panelists of every level and attribute. I think it's great. But I think there's a certain level of kind of like knowing yourself and knowing what you're doing and why you're doing that I think helps you be a stronger panelist. 
first lesson of this is, as I said, know thyself. There's a reason why I probably didn't really start handling until I was in my 20s. Because I wasn't a strong enough fan to be able to stand on a stage and talk about what I love. I had to know myself and to know what I was talking about and to know why I wanted to do this. I had to go on the spirit quest to figure out what happened in my life to lead me to want to do these things. And that journey looks different for everyone. For others, it's not, man, I just want to do it. Cool. You've already made steps that I didn't until I was older. Awesome. If you're young and decide to get into this sooner, great. Have more confidence than I did at that age. Do it. Awesome. But know yourself, know why you want to do this, and that's constantly evolving. Every convention I do, I learn something new and take that to be a better panelist next time. Like, not talking as fast, or being less shouty. I'll never be less shouty. Cool on that? When you're doing panels on just about anything, um, be an expert. There is nothing quite like, especially some of like the um, character panels where it's like, yeah, but what about this? And it's not even, preface, I'm not saying that you need to know obscure stuff. Have a life, please. That's so your collection. But there's like basic stuff about this that you do not know when you're going to run an AMA panel as that character. Please know the base level stuff. And especially if you're going to run a focus panel about anything, editing, video, feminism in anime, which I've done similar topics, do you know what you're talking about? I start most of my panels that are academic with my credentials, that I have a degree, that I work professionally, that I write professionally, and all those things, and I always preface it. I say these things not because I'm elitist. I say them because I want to instill a certain level of confidence in you. So when I use a word like feminism, male gaze, media, or media criticism, I'm not just pulling these words that I learned on Tumblr. I'm pulling these as words that I've learned from academic study and from research and from just generally having to know what I'm talking about. Fair? Cool. Know why you're covering the topics that you cover. Sure, there are some times that you do a fun little thing because you feel like it. For me, it's always been I cover a topic because it's a story that I want to tell. It's something that I want to be a part of, and I feel like I can add to that conversation. And there's some that I've had to back down from. Uh, I would really love to cover this topic. Why are you doing it? If I don't have that level of conviction, it's going to show. I'm passionate about this, which is why we're doing this. I'm passionate about instilling in you guys the ability to be better panelists. Be better than me. Please be better than me. I hope you will one day. Or you may be current. Have that idea, and then again, even if you don't have that immediately, it will likely come to you. We do a pretty intense post-mortem after every show, don't we? And we learn from the mistakes we made. We embrace what worked at one show doesn't work in another. I've told the same joke three times, and only one audience will laugh. That's just the thing sometimes. So have a good idea of why you want to cover these topics, and then that conviction will shine, and you'll have a more engaged audience. Fair? So I squatted up for this. Um, back in my day, old and fangirl that I am, um, panels were a multi-person thing. They were usually five plus people all kind of talking on a topic, and that works for some. I came to find out as I got older and as I did not grow, so my personality became bigger, I don't always work well on a panel with others. Full disclosure, that's just me. I personally have a big enough personality that I sometimes overpower those that are on stage with me. And that's way worse than just me being up here being shouty. So there are times that I squat up, like I have Carlos here to help me tell stories, there's other times where it's just me. If you look on my YouTube channel, a lot of it is just me. That might not be your style. There's definitely some times where it's easier to work with other people and bounce off and have that dialogue and have that discussion. And there's no wrong.
wrong way to do this. But just figure out which way is your way. And then again, know that you'll probably adjust depending on the thing. Fair. Fantastic. Adapt. Um, I don't know if you guys know this, but conventions are crazy. Um, there's equipment failures, there's this thing is missing, there's this room was double booked, there's we're actually in the wrong city, there's someone's asked me a misogynistic and or racist question. Um, there's a certain level of skill that is to adapt in your situation, but it's also one that you kind of learn. And there's times that absolutely you can see the wind completely get knocked out of me. Or if someone asks me a question and I'm just like, poof, wing is gone. I'm getting better not playing it on my face as much. But adapting to the situation I think is vital. I mean, I don't know if you guys can see this setup. We are propping up our projector using a GameCube game because my laptop is too big and the projector is too small. And that's something that you can't plan for, that you can't, you know, assume is going to happen. You also had what, an extra HDMI cable. You usually have all of the extra cables. That's a skill that you learn and you figure out, hey, you might ask for an AV setup, but sometimes that doesn't happen. Adaptation is key. If there was one magic pill that I could give you that taught you all to adapt, well then I'd give it to you. But I'm still learning too sometimes, so happy Hunger Games. So this is actually a really terrible example. Um, this is an old suitcase that I used to use for convention. Carlos, about how big is my suitcase right now? About as big as you are. He's not lying. Um, I could not tell you how many extra outfits are in that suitcase. I could not tell you how many extra cords are in that suitcase, how many things, extra things of makeup, additional wigs. Be more prepared than you think. Again, was not expecting that to use a GameCube game to prop up projector, but we usually do also roll with a certain level of, hey, here's your extra cables, make sure that you have multiple USBs, make sure that you have all of these stands. We do pretty thorough checks before we leave. We do things we like. We do all of those things because that adaptation skill is important, but if you have nothing to work with when you adapt, cool. So this is interesting. There is a very, very fine line between criticism and trolling. And as a biological woman, as a woman with opinions, as a person of color, as a person on this earth, so I'm not just gonna say that bad things only happen to certain people. I've been trolled by fair amount. Not as much because I tend to create panels that trolls would not want to go to. They see a writing female's character panel and they assume that would be too easy. And then they hear me make an allusion to Lilith and then they usually go away. Criticism is great, and I love reading the tea. At the end of every single one of my panels, there is a link to email me if you have feedback. If I've offended you, if I said something you didn't like, if I did something that you did like, I take all of that criticism and feedback to heart. What's important is to be able to distill the difference between being trolled and getting actual criticism. And that may change. There was one, and um, maybe you can help me out with this one a little. There was a guy who left me a review, I think, for a panel at Akon, and he was very offended by the fact that I swore. And I didn't swear a lot. I usually list a lot of my panels as 18 plus just because I do get a little scary sometimes, so I'm really yeah, cute yeah. to it. But this guy was so upset by the fact that I was not speaking the canvas. Wasn't that Akon? Yeah, it was Akon. Uh, 25, 26. 25. So mad. And he's like, every time she swore, it took me out of the panel. Well, not fast enough. <laughs> well, you say that, but then the next year, there was that lady after two swears and just straight up left. Oh, like lady. picked up all five of her skirts and just yeah. left. So, yeah, yeah. When you say swear, are these just like normal words? Are these like... I mean, for someone to get offended and get up, that's just kind of Yeah, I mean, like, I'll, I'm, sorry. I, I, I'm sorry, I've dropped F bombs before. Okay. To what me, I mean, I exist on the internet, that's not a bad word for me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> 
I I exist on the internet. That's like saying hi. Uh, but and I full disclosure admit that that's a bad habit, and I improved. What I didn't take away was this guy who said I was taken out of the panel every time she swore. Like, okay, cool. There was a valid criticism in between five lines of nonsense. Got it. The valid point is probably was swearing too much. Cool. Was it a and ladies shouldn't swear, which buried the lead on that. Did hear that women shouldn't swear. Okay, well now we have a different problem. So that line will be different for everyone. I know personally, I've grown a pretty thick skin again, being a creature of the internet. But when a troll is a troll, ignore them, and you're probably doing fine. If it is valid criticism, accept it and be better next time. Speaking of criticism. I would be lying if I said that I didn't always take criticism personally. I'm human. Sometimes it really bothers me and I get down about it. And I usually have to have a Rocky Four style stirring speech to pick me back up and to tell me that we did okay. But this heart is mended for a reason. I take criticism as well as I can. And for sure, do I get down about it sometimes? Of course. Do I try to be better next time so I don't get the same critique more than once? I bet you sweet butt that I do. Learning how to handle a crowd is fascinating. And again, if there was one magic pill that I had to teach you how to learn how to handle a crowd, I would give it to you after giving it to myself because still learning for disclosure. Um, Carlos, how many times have we had almost fire marshal issues because of your security at Carlos? A few times. We've had some back houses with things that need to be fixed. How many mass power failures have we had? Twice. Yeah, twice. Um, let's see. How many times have people left in a huff? A few times. I mean, there was the one where the parent was like, oh, I can't have my kids here for this. She spirited away her child so fast it was great. <laughs> the issue was it was an 18 plus panel and she had about two 11 year olds. We're like, I don't. Yeah, I don't know how you here. got in, but like, okay, cool. But then also, as I've taken down my ego, how many standing ovations have I received? A few. You've had a few. Oh, okay. few. Each crowd is different. Knowing how to read a room again is on a magic pill. I could give that to you. I would. You went to McDonald's and you did not bring. You He's brought me a happy meal. Wow. I even messaged you. you on Twitter to ask you what you wanted. I love you so much. It's all right. It's okay. <laughs> Heard of being a panelist. Very professional. Big McDonald's in the middle. Yeah. Handle Can't have product placement. Handle the crowd. Yep. Still in the picture. Uh -huh. Don't care. <laughs> to let it out. <laughs> Handling crowds. Each one's going to be different. Learn each time. Be better. Find your voice and your niche. So I found a niche. It's usually angry feminist ranting. Kidding. Writing focus panels Only and ranting. Huh? Only I. Have angry feminist ranting. I run writing panels mostly. I am a writer, I'm a social media manager, I've been doing this for a long time. I found what I don't suck at. I'm not going to say that I'm good. I don't think any actually decent writer says that they're good. I'm okay. I'm not going to them. So I found my niche and I carved it out. And I'm happy to say that I'm one of the better out of the niche that I've carved. Because I'm like one of a lot. The voice that I found as a panelist is one that is a combination of who I actually am, which you would get these rants if you knew me, and also something a little bit different. It's one that is definitely way more open and calm and relaxed. So yes, it is ranty, but it's out of decibel that most of my friends have probably never heard from me. I'm a lot more chill in real life, aren't I? These are things, again, that you'll learn as you continue on. Your first panel will always be interesting. If I went back in time and looked at the first panel that I ever did, that voice is probably completely different than the one that I have. And 
I say voice, that's like persona and stuff. And then actually knowing how to speak and all those other things. How often do I get feedback on talking too fast? It's better now, it used to be worse. When I get nervous, I talk real fast and I get yelly. So that took time to kind of learn, hey, you're talking real fast, probably a little scared. Cool on that? Questions, comments, concerns? Carlos, what is this? That is a slide. <laughs> With a picture of a dessert. You want me to go into more detail? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, it seems to be a cake. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there are multiple colors to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's what it looks like. You don't want me to deny every candle you want to, do you? We can be pretty entertaining. That right there is yes! basically, uh, at the end of all the cons and all that, we usually have sort of, a, I guess, a dessert sort of thing. Yeah, I get cake when I do good. So that was one of the ones where she got one, because she did good once. So she got something. <laughs> this is from Mozart Bakery, which if you've ever been to Dallas or work, Mozart is a big thing up there. Um, and this kind of became our like end of con thing, is that after I panel and after I do well, I get tea and I get cake. Because that's just something that we did once and it sort of became tradition. Yeah. Um, also, because I'm a spoiled brat and if I do good, you will reward me and I get cake. And I get aloe tea because usually by the end of con, I've been yelling into a microphone for three days and I sound like absolute hot garbage usually by the end of convention. The whole point of doing this is to have fun. I would not do this if I didn't have fun. I'm not a masochist. Not that much of a masochist anyways. I love doing this. I love the dialogue that I get to have. I love the friends that I've been able to make and the shameless bribes that I receive and the cake and the being able to see people that I don't see as often as I feel like I should and the learning new things. That should be your aim when you're on stage. It shouldn't just be a giant ego trip. Sometimes it is, though. But you should learn new things and try new things and have fun. I know paneling for me is difficult because it turns something that I love doing as a team into work. And suddenly, it's not just dressing up and talking to people and being with friends. Now it's a job. It's I have to look good. I have to sound good. I have to be on time. And sometimes that's taxing and trying. But I take this role seriously. I took off work for this, my real human job, so I could be at one of these panels. But I take this seriously. So sometimes I forget to have fun, but my friends are great at making sure that I do. And I'm fortunate to have that. And I'm fortunate to have that. It's definitely not sometimes, sometimes it's fun. I'm great. She doesn't know what she's talking about. <laughs> We're going to pause on questions very briefly because we we screwed those this morning. And uh, we're going to have a little bit of story time, yes. shall we? Hmm? If that's what you want to do, we can do that. It is what I want to do. All right. So, I've been paneling now for about five plus years. And with that, I have stories to tell. <laughs> Hello. And I think one of the most interesting stories that we could ever tell is Acon 2014. Which was your late night panel one that we had. Yes. It was so, preface, not to cut you off. He's telling this story at first because it happened to me and I didn't realize what this looked like. Sort of a third person view on what happened in the scene there. Uh, the panel finished around midnight, so yes. we have a bunch of girls who are coming in for a Hot Dads 18 plus of anime. Hot Dads so, of anime! So they're just sitting there, they're waiting to get, you know, their women stuff off of hot men. Yeah. We're exiting, it's kind of full, people are passing by and all that. She turns around, smaller dude about her size, 
Very petite guy. Delicate man. Brushes his shoulder, falls down, and from the view that I had, which was her in front of me, with a field of women waiting for hot men to show up and anime, he almost falls. She grabs him by the shoulder, lifts him up like this. All the girls in the background are like, oh my god! <laughs> Eyes sparkling up, they're writing their fucking fan fictions at that moment. <laughs> she lifts him up and he's just like, thank you so much for saving me. Embraces, girls just, two of them fall to their knees, and then just like, that was it, they were married. That's, that, that's what happened. That's a real life ending. <laughs> that's pretty much what it was. From my perspective, it was a dude who tripped on some really heavy air, and I was like, bruh, you alright? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, that is not what happened. <laughs> because, full disclosure, I went to Akon earlier this year, and a woman who worked at Daiso was like, you have a really familiar, familiar face. Like, oh, well, you know, I do the panel thing. And it's like, no, I don't think I saw one of your panels, but I do remember you from somewhere. Carlos, and like the back of my ear, like, yeah, she was one of those girls writing fanfic of your husband last time. Three years later. Three years she later. remembered that damn scene, so that was a thing. So that's the time I got caught married today. <laughs> From a scene that to me holistically was just like, bro, you all right? <laughs> like, you need an elbow? Apparently, I became Tamaki from Oron. Something like there that. There was cherry blossoms and glitter everywhere. <laughs> um, additional fun stories. Actually, I love that I used this picture because this was from me to a few years ago. Um, and I love having these crowds and I love having a lot of people because you get great questions, and I think some of the most rewarding things that I've ever done have been hearing from educators and parents saying thank you for like helping me better understand what my kid is into. Um, I think that's why I wanted to do these, but I always kept coming back to these images because these images was always like the family convention. So to hear from teachers and parents, <coughs> thank you for helping me better understand what my kid is into, and now I'm not afraid of it. Now I'm not scared. Now we can talk about it. That absolutely makes my day and makes my life. It makes what I do worth it. Um, I think the only slightly interesting story that I ever have from Yuzumi is the panelists before me this year ran over 15 minutes. It was no one's fault except for them because they're brief. Ran over 15 minutes. And then as I've had to pull every string in the book to get them out of this room so I can start and literally pack the house double what they did, they left, and one of the girls flips her hair. Sorry about that. Were we not on time? I'm so glad I didn't see what car they left because there were lots of tires in school school. That's what he's for. No, he's not going to slap any tires. Surprisingly, I'm... It's very much like a typical comedy trope thing, but like he's big, so he's mellow, and I'm small, so I'm angry and violent. So I'm usually the one threatening slash tires, and he's just like, here's a cupcake, be quiet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I've had to quell her anger with food before. Should we tell that one? I had to buy her an ice cream before she murdered a person we were hanging out with. It was and delicious. And that was like the only thing. It was one of those like breaking case of emergency things where you have like a Snickers just in case you just chunk it at her and let her chew it up for five minutes. But sometimes you gotta have that ready with certain people anyway. Yeah. No. And I'm fortunate that we've been friends for many, many years. And now you know that if you need to appease me like the angry idol that I am, that you need to give me cake or ice cream. I make a lot of jokes, but like really I'm living an idol anime. I'm living a 1990s idol anime where I'm just anxiety ridden and stressed out and then I have my manager who is perpetually in between trying to appease me and not trying to kill me. So I'm the Tsubishi Shindo of co um, cosplay and paneling, but I really don't think I'm good at what I do. I am not qualified enough to be here. People keep booking me. So here I am! And then you are perpetually in an in-between state of Here's a cake, please shut up. But also, God, you're annoying. Which is why this works. Other notable stories include 
the time that we got a standing ovation for saying that we were not going to mention Twilight. That was a thing. We got a literal standing ovation for saying that we were not going to talk about Twilight, which is great. And additional fun stories include the time that we nearly died trying to drive away from a convention in a flood because Texas weather and so many more. I have mostly very positive memories. Cons are a hectic time of utter nonsense. And sometimes the fire alarm gets pulled. Sometimes your show is literally underneath the flow concert and you can't hear any of your audio because of dancing people. Or they're next to the karaoke one. Or they're next to the bad karaoke one. And you hear bad Japanese through the whole thing. It's the worst. And sometimes they're great. You get standing ovations for saying things that are empowering and good. Now that you've heard some stories from the field and you know a little bit about me, questions? Yes. Best question. Anything, guys. Are you inspired to be panelists now? I would sit on a panel with you all day. Yes. Um, I guess while you were telling stories, was there any time during the panel that there was an embarrassing moment or just something that kind of brought your anxiety up a little bit? Because I know that if I was ever going to be a panelist, it's always going to run through my head. <laughs> Sweetheart, how much time do I have? <laughs> um, so, also during APON, I mostly go to Dallas Pons because that's where I'm from, so I like going home. I love San Antonio, but I like going home. Um, I had made a statement about female characters um, fighting because I come from a shonen background, and I mentioned... Something to the effect of that there's no middle ground with female characters fighting men that isn't intense sexualized violence or just a bitchy cat fight. The follow-up point then to that was that a woman is more than just a reciprocal for men and that a penis is not in the relationship. To which then I had a woman literally pick up her 15 skirts, grab her furry associate, bust out the door and leave. So there's a good solid five minutes of like screaming, be like, "No, come back!" <laughs> to which then I had to be pulled back down and told that you really aren't missing anything if saying that a woman is more complex than their paramour that was offensive to her, not missing a lot. So fun fact, also, I have generalized anxiety disorder. I am an introvert. I'm constantly stressed out. You find coping mechanisms and ways to be better. So I channel all of that anxiety into doing this, into doing this as well as possible. And I mentioned that I'm an introvert because I have an issue with how the internet depicts introverts of like these like Umaru Chan internet goblins that like never leave the house. Like now, nah, fam, I love this. Being an introvert means that I don't get power from this. So I'm gonna devour these nuggets. The like second jaw will dislocate. I'm gonna devour these nuggets, and I'm going back to the hotel. I'm going swimming because free. We're gonna have a barbecue. And I'm gonna drink. Free is an anime. We're gonna drink champagne, and I'm going to bed. And we're gonna watch Diners, Drive-ins, and Dives. That's gonna be our night. I'm pushing thirty. It's almost bedtime. I got stuff to do. So. My anxiety is constantly flared, all the time. But I put that energy into being vulnerable. So when I say that I get less yelly, that's because I'm a little nervous. I'm afraid that you guys aren't gonna like me. I'm afraid that one of you might call me the N-word. I'm... She means nice. <laughs> that would be more rare. <laughs> <laughs> that would somehow be rarer. <laughs> so there's also actually a really good one where, uh, remember, where you forgot your flash drive. Yes! And we had an update of a yes! panel. And uh, we got saved by Ricky, who managed to basically create them last minute. Yeah, Ricky copy-pasted all the slides manually while I'm, like, hyperventilating into a paper bag. 
basically there was five minutes left for a panel to start. It was pretty much packed. There was probably about like 80 slides. Yeah, yeah. It was like 80 people already there, 30 slides. Line out the door. She had adjusted maybe about seven or eight of them. She had the old version. The flash drive was at the hotel, which was probably like 30 minutes away. Yeah. And uh, she was having a panic attack. Ricky's like, I got this. He's another guy that sometimes comes in. Three minutes, cranked it back out. We were able to go from there. Yeah, I think we spent the first ten minutes of that panel. Like, Thank you, Ricky. <laughs> Just screeching about it. So yeah, and I actually I blocked that from my memory. I was yeah. really fucking terrified. <laughs> so sometimes when you have that anxiety, people can help you with that. You know. Apparently, I missed something. Continue. Oh no, I'm just saying, sometimes it's good to have someone else be there to kind of quell that anxiety, because you're, sometimes when you do solo things, you're going to add so much more pressure on you, so having someone there might help quell some of that issue. I, I think we've been in actual dangerous situations if you never flinch. But like, I look outside and I immediately feel like existential dread and terror, so I need him to balance me out. Um, We've been friends for a very long time, so I'm very good fortunate to have that. Um, but at, at the risk of this sounding like a weird studio or so, Joe and I he is my friend, and I'm grateful to have that. That is how I cope with anxiety. Um, I encourage you to try it. Get up on stage. If you hate it, you'll know immediately. <laughs> Get up on stage, and it's like, nope. <laughs> you know, you just, you trudge off, you know? You learn almost immediately if you like this or if you don't. So, I hope that answers your question. Yeah. Yes. How did you get into panel? So, I've been running anime clubs since I was in high school. Um, and I'm a fan of complex storytelling, and I like having opinions. So, it sort of very naturally led into panel, and especially with getting into college and being able to have more academic conversations. Because when you're in high school, like, everyone just wants to know who your OTP is. Like, no one cares about, like, propaganda and how it's used in Japanese culture. No one cared about in high school. College you do. So college was really where I started the idea of wanting to be a panelist. And um did my first like real adult panel Ikicon, I wanna say like 2013. And was awful. Terrible panel. Would hate to go back and look at that. Um, we were actually thinking of doing it for a cringe thing for the current channel where we all critiqued my first panel that I did as like a real human adult. Had dabbled in it a little bit as a kid, you know, like doing in character chess and stuff, but I hardly really count that nowadays. So that's sort of how I got started with doing it. And it's been a lot of trial and error since then. I'm still finding my voice and finding how to better do things and things like that. And I'll probably continue to do this until I get bored of it. Anything else? Do any of you guys panel? You don't count. Oh. He's an industry guy. Do yes. You do? Good. Cool. I'm proud of you. Good job. Are any of you guys inspired to do it now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know me, I love talking, so you should join me. We should do a panel together. We can just do dramatic retellings of forbidden Bible stories. Can we? I would, can we? I would go to that one. Well, like in character, we have to do it. <laughs> can I be the version of Jesus who's like a little version of Draco Malfoy and is a spoiled brat? <laughs> have we devolved into that? Yeah. Let's do that. Yes. Make friends, make connections. It's okay. the most worthwhile thing in the world. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah. Yes. Can I just say that I love the immediate turn and focus? Um, so actually, when I first started doing like gender role focus stuff, because archetypes are my thing. As a writer, I'm interested in archetypes and roles. When I first started doing like men's roles in anime, writing female characters, characterization, I was really afraid that I would have like one angry Tumblr feminist per panel. <laughs> and those consistently, am I being hyperbolic, those consistently pack houses. Um, I don't really think that I've ever had a panel 
bomb. Like, none of them have been like, there's no one here. Um, I've had a couple that have not been as well attended as others. So my metrics for success are, did I get punched in the face, yes or no? Did I offend someone, how many people, yes or no? So my metrics for success are pretty fluid. Like, this panel, I think was successful. Did I do okay? Yeah. Fair. I'm going to call this a good. If you see my other panels, I'm going to assume they did all right too. Um, but yeah, like I was really surprised actually when I started doing a lot of like the character focused ones that like anyone would want to see or hear someone talk about archetypes and gender roles and how to be a better writer because the problem with stuff like that is you pretty much already assume you're a good writer if you're a writer, which no, probably not if you assume that you are. So it's the people who don't actually need that help that end up coming, which is great because then we get to have like great conversations about like representation and static shock, which is so fun. So fun. Anything else? Do you have any horror stories? Do we? <laughs> Carlos. I mean, do we talk about the girl who can't be named in his band from Zoom? Let's talk about the girl who can't be named. Ooh, we got a bowl yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, this is one of those where one o'clock in the morning at a Whataburger, we're all tired. She's kind of been already annoying everyone. Um, TJ was there for this. Dead silent room like this. Everyone's quiet, Whataburger. And her first words out of her mouth after being quiet for about two hours were, does anyone know any good 9-11 jokes? Oh, no. And I was like, okay, we're going to need to leave now. Because that came out of nowhere. And, I, and mind you, there was probably like 15 or 20 other people at that Whataburger. And that was just day one with her. We had day two, which was, she has a boyfriend with a hand fetish. Ooh. She was trying to find, uh, I believe it was a Rosalina, right? It was Rosalina. Because that's his waifu, and uh, he wanted to get... She had a nervous breakdown in the middle of the dealer room floor that I had to pick her up from and carry her to safety. After she said that me being a panelist is like her being a cam girl because we both expose ourselves for attention because well, obviously the same thing. Isn't that closely related? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's how it works. I mean, like, like, hot cha -cha. in the mentality of it, I can see it, but like in the actual execution of it, they no. both have cameras. I mean, you know, I am literally a cam girl. <laughs> Pay me. Well, I already did get food. Hey, I am a girl. <laughs> to interject, the only thing that kept Amanda from killing she who must not be named was literally RuPaul's, RuPaul's, Drag, Race. RuPaul's Drag Race all weekend. <laughs> That's the only thing that silenced her and kept Amanda from leaping across the room. That's how Harry should have defeated Voldemort. Was put on RuPaul's Drag Race and just been like, "Yes, Hogwarts, let's get sickening." I'm not gonna do a Jack Frost football. <laughs> you can also tell her the story how you rescued her from that creepy guy. So this girl that should not be named um, has a bust that makes me feel small, um, and I'm not. And she's the worst kind about it. Has no idea how large her chest is, and is an utter potato. We go to our hotel bar. Carlos is like, I'm gonna take a nap. Had a rough day. So we go to the hotel bar. There's this guy who has to be like a thousand years old. And yeah, and <laughs> is. Chatting her up because she does like some cool stuff. Don't tell her I said anything nice about her. I'm texting her right now. No, yeah. she does some cool stuff. So she's like talking like her degree and her art, and no joke, this guy is, uh huh, yes, tell me more. This man is in her boots. She's not noticing it, and I'm like, this girl's going to get assaulted. I have to save her. Because the point was that he would take his little cat nap and he'd meet us at the bar. This guy starts asking about what room we're in. I have to, like, Metal Gear Solid, poof, lift her up, carry her out. I'm dragging her like Haku does Chihiro and Spirited Away down narrow corridors. We bump into this guy. He's like, hey, thought we were going to the bar. No, bar is canceled. Go back upstairs. <laughs> bar is canceled. To this day, she still does not understand why we left the bar early. Oh, like, if I asked her right now, I don't speak. If I asked her right now, I don't know why I'm having this in the bar. 
Because you were going to be on Law and Order SVU if I left you. <laughs> you were going to... Dun, dun, that's what would have happened. That's your fate. So, yeah, honey. I got horror stories. <laughs> you guys still have time with me asking stuff. Ask it. What do you do when there's an awkward silence? I yell. I yell until I get my way. Oh. Okay. Um, that's actually an earlier slide, which is managing the crowd. Oh, sorry, awkward. It's okay. You look fine. It's good. Um, awkward silences are a thing, um, and I deal with them the best that I can. Um, I take almost all of my feedback from how I'm doing based on y'all's reaction. So there's an awkward silence. That tells me that I need to do <laughs> So it's usually then feverish backpedaling and figuring out what I did to cause that silence. So there's a difference between awkward silence and a silence of, no, you literally did so well, I have no questions for you. Like, you literally outlined the topic so efficiently that there's no need for a discussion, which is frustrating sometimes because, like a succubus, I feed off of discussion. <laughs> so I deal with awkward silence by trying to assess the situation the best that I can and be better for the next time. Anything else? Must be really satisfying to have people laugh at your jokes. Great. Well, I don't. I'm not funny. So actually, what's amazing? What is amazing is the things that I find that people laugh at are the things that I don't think are funny. <laughs> so he will edit my video, and I'm like, yeah, this was a great part. And he's like, dude, no one was paying attention to you. You know when they were paying attention to you when you threatened to jump out of a window <laughs> because someone didn't know what Cowboy Bebop was. So. <laughs> Sorry. Horror story. So, yeah, it's. That's, that's the dude who had the nachos and had the seat in the back and kicked his feet up and everything. Oh, yeah, that guy who was dressed as like that really, really bad shake and go Naruto yeah. who had nachos, but like we'd never seen.